Okay everyone, okay everyone, this video is going to be a little personal today. Just wanted to share with you some things that God has been really dealing with me today and probably lessons he taught me in the past and I just kind of forgot them or whatever, but I was really just talking to the Lord and walking today and really thinking over my past and a lot of the mistakes that I made and people that hurt me over the past and stuff like that. <clears throat> and through the process of talking with the Lord, I came to the conclusion is I, like all of you out there, can't help if other people judge me by my past. And I can't help what other people think about me or what they say about me or anything of that nature people are going to think about me what they're going to think about me and they're going to judge me by my past if that's what they choose to do but what I do have control over and what you all have control over is that I can stop judging myself by my past and by my failures and about all the regrets that I have in my past and the same for you guys or I can keep judging myself, condemning myself, and saying, what if I would have done this, if I'd done that, if I'd handled this better, or if I'd handled that better. The truth is, we will always be our number one worst enemy. I will always be my number one worst enemy. I'm not afraid of the devil. The devil is a defeated foe. Now, I'm not saying I, tempt, I test the Lord by going after him or I'm naive of his devices. What I'm saying is my own mind portrays me any more than the way, way more than any way the devil has ever tried to trip me up. I, like many of you out there, are the, the reason we're not successful is the reason is we don't believe who God says we are. We don't believe that we're capable of doing what God says we're capable of doing. We cheat ourselves by believing that we can't, that it's too hard or too great or just too much work or a variety of excuses. The truth is, I can keep telling myself, I can't do this, I can't do that, I'll never be good at this, it's too big, it's too much. Why? Looking back over my own life, I can say, <laughs> with utmost certainty, there has been myriads of times where I started something I felt like God led to do or something I was passionate about and then I tripped myself up. I tripped myself up by saying it was too hard, it was too much. I just gave up. Even the times I counted the cost and said, okay, I know this is going to cost me, I know this is going to be a lot of work and I started out so strong and so well. But then I felt so sh I fell so short when it got hard or when it didn't happen as fast as I wanted or it was wasn't as easy as I wanted to be or whatever. Truth is, a lot of times in my life, I have been the people that God talked about that the seed was scattered on shallow ground. And they started out eagerly, enthusiastically, received the word, went for it. But as soon as things got tough, the, the, it withered and it died. Now, I don't, I'm not saying this to condemn myself. I'm saying this as a fact. This has been me to this point. Now, here I am in ministry. And things aren't always that easy in ministry. Most people think ministry, oh, that's just for lazy people that don't want to work. No, ministry really is work. That's something I learned in Institute of Ministry at 18 when I attended there in Herman, New York. Mm. As you spell ministry, W-O-R-K. Ministry is a lot of work. Now, it's my passion, so it doesn't always feel like work. But ministry is more than me just doing these videos, teaching and sharing with you or praying for those in need or going to the hospital, visiting the sick, visiting the nursing homes, all that. And that's great. That's grand. That's my passion. But ministry is also a lot of, is a lot of administration, a lot of paperwork, a lot of dealing with finances and how are we going to fulfill God's vision? It's easy to be the visionary. It's easy to be Thomas Edison and say, this is what God wants to do. But finding people that help you along the way and getting consensus with them and getting on board, everybody on the same page and moving in the right, same direction, all that, is a lot of work. Most people see the teaching on the pulpit 
or the feeding of the of those who, who need food or so on and so forth. They don't see all the behind the scenes work that gets goes into that. Now I'm not saying all this so you pity me or so you'll donate to my ministry and all that. God will show me what that's worth. I'm just sharing from my heart to say, look, a minister's life is not that easy. I'm not going to sit there and say, woe is me, it's hard. But ministers struggle too. I'm a human being. I struggle. Yesterday, my secretary resigned. I thank her for her service. I understand the reasons she resigned. I'm happy for her honesty. But that leaves another hole that needs to be filled just when things are making another forward moment in this time of uncertainty. So yes, that's a stressor. But I know God will provide. God gave the vision. God will do it. Too often in my past, and it's very easy in the present, and it's the human thing to do, is to be like the ten of the twelve spies who see, saw the giants in the promised land. They saw the big plants and the high walls, and all they saw were impossibilities. And they convinced Israel that God wasn't big enough to help them, that there was no way they were going to win, and that was all that's to it. But two people, Joshua and Caleb, they remembered how big God was. They remembered how he parted the Red Sea, how he he slayed Pharaoh's firstborn and all the plagues of Egypt and how they defeated all their enemies without their having to do a single thing. And they remembered how big God is. Now, I'm always trying to focus on how big God is instead of the wind and the ra- waves. I don't want to be like Peter focusing on the wind and the waves and sinking. And Jesus saying, why didn't you have faith? I want to keep my eyes in Christ. That's oftentimes easier said than done. It is a challenge for me to constantly see myself as God sees me. And I know I'm not the only one. It's a constant challenge for me to push day by day by day by day by day by day to keep things on track. There's many times where I probably bawled because I pulled my hair out. Not literally, that's a joke, but... Wondering, okay, what next? What do I do now? It's so easy for me to break down and say, Ah, great, now what? I give up. But I don't want to give up anymore. I don't want to be that quitter that I once was. I don't want to be the person that just says, I surrender every time things get hard. That is not who I want to be as a person, and that is not who I'm going to be as a person. I'm going to keep going. I'm chosen today... To start learning the things I need to learn. To continue to do these videos. And to learn to get uh, better thumbnails and better descriptions and better... uh, What's the term I'm looking for? Thumbnails for the pictures, the descriptions, tags for the videos, that kind of thing. I may never be the greatest social media person there ever was. Nor do I really want to be. But I can learn to do this with my whole heart, with all of my energy within me. And I want you all to hold me accountable to this. And I could all use you guys' the suggestions too because, you know, I'll look at YouTube tutorials and that too. But there's nothing better than seeing, getting tried and true advice from those who have been there. So any help would be greatly appreciated in that avenue. That said, the Bible does say that whatever we're given to do by the Lord, we should be Doing wholeheartedly is unto the Lord. And that means I need to stop half-hearting it and actually go forth and do what God told me to do. And that's scary because I'm not a good administrator. I'm getting better. But administrating is not my passion. But I do realize as being a minister and being the president of ministry, I cannot just focus on what I'm passionate about and only what I'm passionate about. I have to learn and grow and develop the areas of ministry that I don't necessarily enjoy Because that's part of ministry. That's part of my calling. I don't want to say job because I don't feel ministry is a job in the sense that it's something you do just because I'm going to go in ministry. No, it's really a calling from the Lord. But we have to stir up those gifts that are in us. We have to stir up the gift that was imparted on us by the laying of the hands. God gave us gifts by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we have to stir those up. We have to surround ourselves with people that believe in us and build us up. And that's what I'm looking for now. A board to serve underneath me. And I technically serve underneath them too because we balance each other out. 
but people who believe in the mission who can encourage me when I'm feeling down and I can encourage when they're feeling down. No one is an island and that includes me. I have taken, I'm taking a stand today that I'm not going to half heart anything anymore and I'm not going to just compromise everything and I'm not going to quit just because it's hard. And even if people tell me it's impossible, then I'm going to show them that God is the God of impossible. And even if people want me to fail, I'm going to show them that God is the God who lifts up the smallest in the world and makes them somebody. And I may not reach what the world may call success, but what God calls success and what the world calls success are two entirely different things. If I can make every person that God sends me to or sends my way feel like they matter and leave them better than I found them, then I will consider myself success. I think it was Maya Angelou that said, people won't remember what you say or what you did but they will remember how you made them feel. So if I can live up to grandma's, my grandma Irene Weaver's legacy, she may not have had many worldly things and she certainly didn't have a lot of money, but she was generous in spirit. And how many people in the kingdom of God, because that woman prayed for them and that woman told her that they matter, told them they mattered. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my grandma Weaver telling me that I mattered and Jesus loves me no matter what people tell me and that God loves me no matter what and if it wasn't for her constantly being there for me believing in me and encouraging me I wouldn't be here I wouldn't even be a Christian I wouldn't be in ministry I wouldn't even be alive because I was very suicidal as an adult as a teenager I'm talking about 11, 15 to 15 years old when I went through what I went through. I'm not ashamed to admit that. I've been there. But it was the Holy Spirit, and I didn't even know it was the Holy Spirit then, would tell me, could you do that to your grandma? Could you hurt someone who loves you that much? Don't tell me nobody loves you. I want to live up to the lessons the Lord taught me through her. To be generous with my words, to tell people they matter, to just give people a hug when they need one. And just to listen, even if you don't have the answer, just listen and tell them that Jesus loves them and they matter. If I could do that personally and in this ministry, then I'll have been the greatest success in the world as far as I'm concerned. Because I can't change what people think of me. And I don't want to try. And I can't help what people want to judge concerning me. I don't really want to try. I know I'm not here to please everyone, and I'm not really interested in trying. If I can make a difference to one person, then it's all been worth it. All the rest I help after that is pure bonus and graciousness from the Lord. I just want to be real honest and transparent. I don't want to come across as fake or phony or ungenuine. I'm a living person, people, my fellow brothers and sisters, my fellow humans, all you guys out there. I'm a human being too. I struggle. I get angry when I shouldn't get angry. I mean, it's something God has really brought me miles with, and I'm not nearly as angry as I used to be. But I can get derailed easy. I can sabotage myself real easy. I'm a human being. I'm not perfect. I don't want anybody thinking I'm some kind of super saint. I mean, if anybody does, they're really not paying attention very well. But I just wanted to share what God was saying to me as an encouragement to you guys. Because I believe God's strength is made perfect in my weakness. And I believe by just being real with you guys, not only keeps me relatable, but I hope gives you guys hope as well. Because if God can use me to be a pastor and to be an evangelist, a prophet, an encourager, a teacher, some say apostle, I don't see that necessarily, but if God can use me to do all these things, then God can use you too. And you can go after your dreams that God put in your heart and you can obtain them if you don't give up. The trick is just being resolved not to give up and to keep your eyes on how big God is. And not how small you are. And to stop telling yourself what you can't do. 
and ask how other people help to learn the skills that you need to learn. And surround yourself with people who believe in you, who want to see you succeed, who will help you to learn the things that you need to learn. Because, like I may never be a social media giant guru, know everything there is to know about social media and YouTube and all that, but I can do the best that I can do. And trust that eventually God will send someone that that is their passion and they can pick up on the hard work that I put into it and soar with it and really go places with it. What I mean is you have to develop the skills that you're not good at and learn to at least like or tolerate the things about what you're called to do or brings you passion that you don't like doing. No matter how much you're pursuing your passion or doing a dream, there's always going to be aspects of that you don't like. That's life. But you can't, like I, you can't run away from those things. You have to acknowledge them and develop your skills and get stronger in those areas. Me, it's working on my confidence. Truly believing that I have something to offer the world and that I am not small. In God's eyes, I'm a giant. Because he lives within me. And I am not inferior to anyone. I battle that every day. I have an inferiority complex, my counselor tells me. I see myself as small and I have to learn not to compare myself to others. And I know I'm not the only one. I share this so that if other people have inferiority and are comparing yourself to others, I can only give you the same advice the Holy Spirit and my counselor told me. Stop it. Comparing yourself to others will kill you. Even the healthiest brain will be derailed by comparing yourself to others. You're not others. You're you. God's called you to do what you're called to do and created you to do what you're created to do as you, not everyone else. Yes, you can learn from different methods other people use that were successful, but you have to make those methods your own. God did not create us to be clones. Don't waste 20, almost 30 years trying to be like everybody else, trying to please everybody else, trying to make everybody else happy, trying to fit in, desperately trying to fit in like I did. And waste all that time you could have been yourself, could have been saving money, could have been planning for the future, could have been walking in what God has created you to walk in, doing what God has called you to do. Instead of letting other people talk you out of it by telling you what you can't do. Instead of letting other people tell you that you're not qualified or you just don't have a pulpit ministry or you don't have the skill set to do this. Or who do you think you are to do this instead of doing what we tell you to do? Or who do you think you are to step out and do this instead of work 95? The Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. But you know what's worse than giving in to what other people say about you or what other people want you to be or tell you to do or so on and so forth? That's talking yourself out of what God says you're capable of. Of telling yourself that you can't do it so you convince yourself to give up. That's the revelation I came in up to. That's the sad part. I wasn't just buying into what other people told me I couldn't do and letting them shove me in the box. I was helping them do it. I was agreeing with them that I'm not qualified, that I'll never be able to do this, that I'll never be successful. I'm not charismatic enough. I'm not outgoing enough. Nobody believes in me. Nobody's going to give me a chance. All those excuses that go through everybody's head I was right there in agreement with them. I was not only letting them do it, I was helping them. And that's the sad and tragic part. And that's the part I want you guys to avoid out there. To, to learn from my mistakes. Don't waste the time that I wasted convincing yourself and listening to others about what you can't do and what you can't be and what you should do. You weren't created to live in somebody else's box or expectations. And you weren't meant to live talking yourself out of what God has said you can do. It's been said, if you don't believe in yourself, no one else will believe in you either. Truth is, you can't believe in yourself until you believe who God says you are. And once you choose to believe what God says you are, who God says you are, 
then you can begin to believe in yourself and then other people will believe in you also. Not everybody's going to like you. Oh well. Not everybody like Jesus either. But if you can keep going and not give up, you will succeed and I will succeed. And that's what I felt led to share today. Learn from what God showed me today and learn from what I've come to the conclusions of today. Don't waste your life, not one more moment. Go after your dreams. Go after that which God called you to do. Don't give up and don't surrender. And don't ever let anyone talk you out of what God has put in your heart or out of your dreams. Don't let them pull you down to their level. Find people who will support you. Remember, you have the ultimate person supporting you, and that's Jesus Christ, and he will never leave you, forsake you. There is a friend that sticks closer than a brother, and he will lift you up. But you must put in the work. You must not give in and never surrender. And you have to tell yourself, Self, stop telling me what I can't do. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Whether I'm in want or whether I'm in plenty, I can do all things. Nothing is impossible for those who believe. So just believe. Because with God, all things are possible. I really hope this helped, guys. This is just being candid and honest and real. If this has helped you, Comment below. What are you struggling with? I can always use a word of encouragement too. Again, I'm not sharing this so I can get fishing for encouragement or anything like that. Or sympathy or so you'll donate more than my ministry. I just wanted to share my heart and what I felt God saying and some of the things, revelations and conclusions I've come to myself. Just to be real and candid and down to earth and let you know, you know what? We all struggle, including me. And I'm not perfect. And I truly pray that sharing honestly like this encourages at least one of you. You know, like I said, comment below what you're struggling with. We can encourage one another. Just as I can use encouragement, I'd love to encourage you guys. Even more than I like to be encouraged, I'd like to encourage you guys. So let's encourage one another. Because we're supposed to lift up each other in our most holy faith. So I really, again, know I'm repeating myself and I'm sorry. Another bad habit I got to work on. I really hope this has helped at least one person out there. You know, I really got, appreciate all you guys that listen, all my subscribers. And I really am thankful and grateful for all that God's given me the opportunity to do. And I expect each and every one of you to hold me accountable to what I said here today. Especially those on my board. All right, you all have a wonderful day. Take this lesson to heart. Hear what God's saying to the churches through the Holy Spirit. Okay? You all have an excellent day.